but I saw in your book you have a disdain for people who try to use math to explain like macroeconomic things. And I share some of that disdain because I saw Paul Krugman uh, pervert math as if he was using math to make his case, but he wasn't really. My, my problem is, and maybe you can point me to a good book where this isn't the case, I think we should be able to win this argument with math. Why does it have to just be paragraphs and nice sounding words and all these books by the Austrian economists? Why can't we bust out and do a problem set and have a system of equations and maybe some linear algebra uh, and a little bit of calculus if you can stand it? We should be able to win this argument with math and then now you have a proof instead of you know, these philosophical things. Well, first of all, let me just note that you're making the argument for math using words. So ultimately, math cannot speak on its own. Well, I, I'm, I would just speak in numbers if I thought people would enjoy the podcast. <laughs> well, let me tell you, this is, this is what I discuss in my third book, Principles of Economics, which is like an, uh, an Austrian textbook. And the first chapter is specifically dedicated to answering this question. Why is it that the Austrians don't like uh, to put a lot of equations into their economics. And there are a lot of uh, papers written about that. There's a lot of discussion about it. But if I were to zero in on the precise explanation for it, I, I get this from Mises. And not a lot of people focus on this from Mises' work. But it boils down to one simple fact, which is that when you're doing a physical phenomenon, when you're looking at physics, you are using uh, mathematical constants that can define physical quantities that are objectively understood by everybody and everybody understands what they are. So everybody knows what a meter is. The only reason we can have anything in physics and chemistry and we can do all of those things is everybody has a very clear idea about what a meter is, what a second is, what a temperature a Kelvin is, all of these different units, the Pascals, the all of these things. We, have, we know what they are and we can reproduce them independently. So you can conduct an experiment and I can conduct an experiment. We have the same exact frame of reference, which is a meter. And that's because we have a constant that can measure these physical quantities. In economics, what we're dealing with, the subject of economics is human valuation of economic goods. But human valuation does not have a constant unit. So because we don't have a constant unit, we end up performing math without units, which is invalid. So this so, is something... Yeah. By the yeah. way, I had this argument with the EPA director in a hearing once. I'm like, can you do science without math? No. Can you do math science without units? No. You have to have math exactly. to do science, and you have to have units to do any of that. But keep going. Yeah, so if you have units, if, if, we, if we manage to find, so in, in the Mac micro textbook, you might remember some of the micro textbooks, they come up with a fake unit called the util for measuring yeah. utility that people get, yeah. which is silly because what is a util? You know, how many apples are in a util or how well, it many? It makes me happy. Yeah, happy units. Yeah. Exactly. But, you know, how many, how many Ferraris can you exchange for a util or uh, all of those things? Obviously, it's meaningless because we have no metric by which we can define a util as being something that gives me this kind of happiness or that kind of happiness. We're all, taught, we're, all of this stuff can't be precisely measured. And so if it can't be precisely measured, we cannot perform economic calculation on it. The one constant unit, the one thing that can perform economic calculation is the individual himself. And so this is why for me, Austrian economics makes you a libertarian almost always is because you understand that there can't be an authority, a, a, a person in a position of authority that can perform economic calculation that can figure out for you what is the way that can maximize your happiness because I can't figure out the options that you have you know, should you piss off APAC today or should you piss off the environmentalists today or should you piss off the COVID cult today? I don't know how much satisfaction you get from any of these so that I could perform the economic calculation for you and tell you that you should spend your day doing this. But you can do that for yourself because you can uh, organize things according to your uh, self as the frame of reference while giving each one of those things a valuation that is ordinal but not cardinal. Okay. So you don't well, attach a unit to it, but you compare them to well, one another. Well, let me push back just a little bit. Uh -huh. Maybe uh, we do have like GDP is measured in dollars. Well, interest rates is, is actually unitless, I guess. <laughs> it's a relative thing, right? Um, but there are some measures. Maybe, it, and if you could predict the GDP a year from now, giving certain units, you know, 
you would be rich, right? Like if you, maybe it's because a lot of this just isn't predictable and there's so many inputs, you would need like chaos theory to model it. It's almost like the weather. We, we know when it's about to rain, if the barometer changes, right? But yes, but, but, but there's a lot more predictability in the weather. So a lot of people like to bring up the uh, argument of complexity, and this is kind of a Hayekian argument, and there is some merit to it that we need computers that are maybe too big. But I think it's a wrong argument because computers keep getting better, but they're never going to be good enough to perform economic calculation without a constant unit. As long as we're looking at things that don't have units, then no amount of processing power can perform that economic calculation. And so the history of socialism on, uh, from an economic perspective is people thinking they got over that because they found a way to perform economic calculation with, economic, uh, with mathematical tools applied to things that don't have units. And that's why socialism always falls apart. It's not so much the complexity because you can perform very complex calculations. You can run a computer, supercomputer that runs for a long time, and it can, you know, even, even a system that has millions of causal factors, you can still perform economic calculation, but you need units. And that's what we don't have. So you're saying math is hard, so we shouldn't do it. Just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, no, I think we should try. I think we should try. Um, Obviously, there are, are quants working on Wall Street that can predict things at least a picosecond into the future, and that's how they make money. But you know, we could try. I just want to yeah, but use that's entrepreneurial judgment, though, not scientific prediction. So there's a difference between yeah. making an entrepreneurial judgment saying, I think next year Apple uh, stock is going to go up and I'm going to bet on it. And then if I do it, that's very different from a scientist who's calculating what's the pressure of this volume of this gas going to be if it is that volume and at this temperature, you know? That's great. You haven't convinced me completely. But I feel uh, like an embarrassment of riches being able to have this conversation with you. With I Like I just spent hours of my life listening to a book, which I found very enriching. And now I get to talk to the brain that was behind it and I've it almost like my questions must seem like very stupid to you. No, absolutely not. This is a very smart question that very smart engineers usually ask because they get it and they see why it's just so much more easier to do things in engineering. And they don't quite get why this Nobel Prize winner like Krugman is putting these meaningless equations and not even solving them, but just telling us this is how it should be. Well, now I understand better why uh, I was, your book was resonating with me at the <laughs> 1.25x on the audio. So if you probably, <laughs> because also you don't narrate the book. Um, it's somebody else. So I, until I met you here today, I wondered if that voice, like that voice was you to me uh, for, for, you know, several weeks in my car, but now I'm talking to a different voice. But I think if they had spoken at 1.25x, it would be more like you. <laughs> well, my third book, Principles of Economics, which discusses this in detail, I do read the audiobook for that one. So I'm going to send oh, it to okay. you and uh, you can listen to that one and then we can have a longer discussion about it. I'd be delighted to do it anytime. It's an honor, sir. Mm -hmm.